Well, everybody, welcome back to the Bible Breakdown Podcast with your host, Pastor Brandon. Today, 1 Kings chapter 18, and today's title is Let's Get Ready to Rumble. Let's get ready to rumble. We're about to have a battle royale up in here. It's going to get real. It's going to be fun. We're going to jump right into it because there's a lot to it today. But for that, as always, if you like what we're doing here, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you leave us a five-star review on the podcast and join us at the Facebook group. There's so much that's in this. So I want you to go to the Facebook group at the Bible Breakdown Discussion and just see what else is there. And then we want to hear from you. As you're studying God's Word with us, what strikes you? What, what principle from God's Word are you pulling out? Because, man, the more we dig, the more we find. And this one right here is one of those. Man, there's so much in it. And as a matter of fact, this is where we get our theme verse for the entire book of First Kings, when Elijah just challenges the entire nation of Israel. And so to kind of set you up a little bit as you're getting your Bible out and turning it to First Kings chapter 18, remember that we said the theme of this entire book is that our history tells a story, but it doesn't always tell the full story. God is writing the full story, and it is not finished yet. And what's been going on in the nation of Israel, and this is all about Israel right now. Judah's doing their own thing. We'll get to them in a little while. But Israel's just been going down and down and down, 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 right? Until finally, they've got the worst king so far, and unfortunately, he's not the worst king they're going to have yet, but the worst king so far named Ahab. Now, the sad thing is, is as a king, n- nothing religious, but just as a builder and all that kind of stuff, Ahab did some pretty cool stuff. I mean, he built some stuff. He did some stuff. He, he created some alliances, all this kind of stuff. But all of that is worth nothing because he was such a dumpster fire as a leader when it came to turning toward God. Not just him, but his wife. His wife, her name is Jezebel, and they just brought in this idolatrous worship called the worship of Baal. Baal is a false god that has been plaguing Israel all the way since them leaving Egypt. And here it is again, this false god, Baal. And what's so interesting about this is, is that Elijah takes on this false god to prove that God is God always. One of the ways that happens subtly that we're not going to notice here is that for three and a half years, you know, it has not rained. Elijah said, because you have done this, it's not going to rain so you can know God is God. Now, why is a drought, <laughs> why is a drought showing God is God? That seems like that's obviously like not obvious, right? This is just obviously wrong. Well, here's the thing. Baal, or as they actually, the word is Baal, but it's hard to say. So just know that when I say Baal, it sounds like, almost sounds like you're, you're burping, you know, Baal, but it's Baal for us today. Uh, it was considered a god of the harvest. That what Baal, Baal would do is he was the one who was in charge of making sure the rain would come in the season and the crops would grow and all harvest would happen and everything would happen on time. So the fact that it didn't rain was basically Elijah spitting in the face of Baal, saying, oh, so he's in charge of the weather, is he? Well, let me show you who's really in charge. So that's one reason why it was such a big deal that it didn't rain. And then as we're going to see, he's then going to say, have this battle royale and say, okay, let's get ready. Let's have us a confrontation. Whoever's God is God, show up. And so let's see what happens. You ready? First Kings chapter 18, verse 1 says this. Later on, in the third year of the drought, the Lord said to Elijah, Go and present yourself to King Ahab. Tell him, I will soon send rain. So Elijah went to appear before Ahab. Meanwhile, the famine had become severe in Samaria. So Ahab summoned Obadiah, who was in charge of the palace. Obadiah was a devout follower of the Lord. Once, when Jezebel had tried to kill all the Lord's prophets, Obadiah had hidden 100 of them in two caves. He put 50 prophets in each cave and supplied them with food and water. Ahab said to Obadiah, We must check every spring and valley in the land to see if we can get enough grass to save at least some of my horses and mules. So they divided the land between them. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. As Obadiah was walking along, he suddenly saw Elijah coming toward him. Obadiah recognized him at once and bowed low to the ground before him. Is it really you, my lord Elijah? he asked. Yes, it is, Elijah replied. Now go and tell your master, Elijah is here. 
Oh, sir, Obadiah protested. What harm have I done to you that you are sending me to my death at the hands of Ahab? For I swear by the Lord your God that the king has searched every nation and kingdom on earth from end to end to find you. And each time he was told, Elijah is not here. King Ahab forced the king of that nation to swear to the truth of his claim. And now you say, go tell your master Elijah is here. But as soon as I leave you, the spirit of the Lord will carry you away to who knows where. And when Ahab comes and cannot find you, he will kill me. Yet I have been a true servant of the Lord all my life. Has no one told you, my Lord, that about this time, about the time that Jezebel was trying to kill the Lord's prophets, I hid a hundred of them in two caves and supplied them with food and water? And now you say, (laughs) go tell your master Elijah is here? Sir, if I do that, Ahab will certainly kill me. But Elijah said, I swear by the Lord Almighty, in whose presence I stand, that I will present myself to Ahab this very day. So Obadiah went to tell Ahab that Elijah had come, and Ahab went out to meet Elijah. When Ahab saw him, he exclaimed, So, is it really you, you troublemaker of Israel? I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied. You and your family are the troublemakers, for you have refused to obey the commands of the Lord and have worshipped the images of Baal instead. Now, summon. Here's, here's the, let's get ready to rumble, right? The battle royale. Now, summon all Israel to join me at Mount Carmel along with 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who are supported by Jezebel. Pause. So what he's saying is, it's time. Let's get ready to rumble. It's time to end this mess. Because what had happened was, is Elijah had been searching, excuse me, Ahab had been searching all over the place for Elijah because it was Elijah who had said, it is not going to rain. That's how twisted Ahab's mind is, is he thinks Elijah has done this instead of God. So he's after Elijah to kill him. But instead, Elijah, he, he's not hiding. He's, he's over here. <laughs> you know, God has kept him safe for this time. But now it's time for him to, to present himself. It's time. And so what Elijah says is, we go out to have us a battle. I want you to go get the 450 prophets of Baal, the 400 asterisk prophets from, that Jezebel has, and let's see whose God is God. And oh, by the way, go get all Israel to come so they can all see. Can you imagine? Do you imagine the confidence that this guy has in the Lord? Well, let's see what happens with this confidence. Verse 20. So, Ahab summoned all the people of Israel and the prophets to Mount Carmel. Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, How much longer, this is our theme verse, How much longer will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. In other words, they don't want to get involved in this. <laughs> they, they, they are not sure what's going on here, but Elijah is looking them square in the eye and saying, it is time for you all to make a decision. Who are you going to serve? And so watch what happens in verse 22. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only prophet of the Lord who is left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Pause. He's not the only one that's left. He thinks he's the only one that's left. If you remember, Obadiah has hidden a hundred of them guys over here in a corner somewhere, over in a cave, that he thinks he's the only one left. So it's him against everybody. And he says, there's 450 of them prophets of Baal. There's just me. Watch what happens. Now, bring two bulls. The prophets of Baal may choose whichever one they wish and cut it into pieces and lay it on the wood of the altar, but without setting a fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood on the altar, but not set a fire to it. Then call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by setting fire to the wood is the true God. And all the people agree. I mean, wouldn't you agree too? Whoever answers by fire from heaven, that's God. That's, that's pretty hard to dispute, right? So let's see what happens. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, you go first. For there are many of you, choose one of the bulls, prepare it, and call on the name of your God, but don't set it, set fire to the wood. So they prepared one of the bulls and placed it on the altar. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning until noontime, shouting, O Baal, answer us, O Baal, 
Bell, 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 bell. But there was no reply of any kind. Then they danced, hobbling around the altar that they had made. About noontime, Elijah began to mock them. You'll have to shout louder, he scoffed, for surely he is a god. Perhaps he is daydreaming or he is relieving himself. Pause. Do you know what that means? That's the Bible's way of saying maybe he had to go to the bathroom. In other words, Elijah is clowning these folks. He is making fun of them for real, for real, right? So let's read that again. Surely he is a god. Perhaps he is daydreaming or he had to go poo. <laughs> or maybe he is away on a trip or is asleep and needs to be awakened. So they shouted even louder, and they followed their customs of cutting themselves with knives and swords until blood gushed out. They raved all afternoon until the time of the evening sacrifice, which is probably about three, between three and five o'clock. But there was no sound, no reply, no response. So they spent all day long doing the electric slide, doing whatever they could do to try to get Baal to answer by fire. But of course, we know it was never going to happen. Because Baal is not really a god. Watch what happens. Verse 30. Then Elijah called to the people. Come on over here. Let's see what happens. Come over here. They all crowded around him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been torn down. He took 12 stones, one to represent each of the tribes of Israel. And he used the stones to rebuild the altar in the name of the Lord. Then he dug a trench around the large around the altar large enough to hold three gallons of water. He piled wood on the altar, cut the bull into pieces, and then laid the pieces on the wood. Then he said, fill four large jars with water, and then pour the water over the offering and the wood. Now, after they had done this, he said, do the same thing again. And when they were finished, he said, now a third time. And so they did. And the water ran down the altar and it even filled the trench. Now pause. Now, this was not something that they had agreed on, but Elijah, he's doing a little extra. He's saying, I don't want there to be any guesses. This is a dry area. It's late in the day. I don't want anybody to say, well, it was just so dry. You know, no, actually, we're going to put water. And also, here's the thing too. He is making fun of these prophets because it had not rained for three years, which means this water is at a premium. This water is very, very valuable. And so he is saying, I'm going to take the most precious commodity. I'm going to show you who is God. Verse 36, at the usual time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and he prayed, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. O Lord, Answer me. Answer me so that these people will know that you, O oh Lord, are God and that you have brought them back to yourself. Immediately, the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even licked up all the water in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell face down to the ground and cried out, The Lord, He is God. Yes, the Lord is God. Then Elijah commanded, seize the prophets of Baal. Don't let a single one of them escape. So the people seized them all, and Elijah took them down to the Kishon Valley and killed them there. Elijah, don't mess around. Fire came down from heaven, and it didn't just consume the sacrifice. It consumed the wood, the stone, the dust, and even the water. And then he said, grab the 450 prophets of Baal. And then he went and had them killed. Now, I'm going to assume, because 400 is a lot of folks, that he had some help. But Elijah goes down there and kills all of these guys. Now, then watch, watch what happens. This is even cooler right here. Verse 41. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go get something to eat and drink, for I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. Remember, it hadn't rained in three years, but it's time. So Ahab went down to eat and drink, but Elisha climbed to the top of Mount Carmel and bowed low to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. Then he said to the servant, go and look out toward the sea. The servant went and looked and then returned to Elijah and said, I don't see anything. Seven times Elijah told him to go back. Finally, on the seventh time, 
his servant said, I saw a little cloud about the size of a man's hand from the sea. So what happened was, is he starts to pray, okay, God, it's time for you to show that you truly are God. You, you sent fire from heaven. Now send rain from the sky. Show them who you truly are. Go, go see if there's a cloud. There's no cloud. Go see if there's a cloud. Seven times he has to go back. You know, at some point, that servant was like, should we lie to him? <laughs> I'm tired of going back over there. But no, seven times, about the size of a man's hand is what I see. Then Elijah shouted, hurry to Ahab and tell him, climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. This, this is so crazy. And soon the sky was black with clouds. A heavy wind brought a terrific rainstorm, and Ahab left quickly for Jezreel. Then the Lord gave special strength to Elijah. He tucked his cloak into his belt and ran ahead of Ahab's chariots all the way to the entrance of Jezreel. What in the world just happened? He just outran probably the fastest horses in the country. I'm going to tell you something right now. That's, that's ridiculous. That's crazy. But, of course, of course God would do that. After sending fire from heaven, sending rain from a cloudless sky that all of a sudden becomes one, it seems like not a big deal that he can make him run a little faster, right? Hussein Bolt, the first version, like he's the prototype. Amazing, amazing. But here's the thing. This is what happens when God comes to town. This is what happens when God says enough is enough. I'm going to show you who truly is God. But you got to make a decision who you're going to follow. Can I tell you, I have seen so many people come to crossroads in their life where they've been going down a wrong path and they know what's right. They know what they're supposed to do. But for whatever reason, they started going down the wrong path. And now they've been going down that wrong path for a long time. And then God will send people in their life to say, you've got to make a course correction. You've got to go the right direction. And they come to that crossroads where they have to decide who is God. Can I tell you, Elijah's challenge to them is the challenge he still sends to all of us, God does. And that is, how long will you waver between two opinions? If God is God, commit to him follow him. If Baal is God, if pornography is God, if, if uh, being unfaithful is God, if, if your uh, alcoholism is God, if, if your things of this world are, are God, whatever it is that you're putting as an idol over God, if your finances is God, if all that, then, then won't you sell out to it? Don't, do, don't go halfway. Be, be, the, be the best you can be. But I want to warn you, it leads to horrible places. But if God is God, follow him and watch what he can do. Can I tell you, I, I think it's absolutely possible that there are people that are listening or watching to this right now. You are one good decision away from God changing things in your life. And that decision is going all in with God. Now, it may not be like this. It may not be one day that turns everything around. It may be one season where you start making small changes and small things. You start implementing reading God's word every day, talking to him every day, getting Christian fellowship in your life, you know, putting, getting rid of some addictions and things and slowly asking for help and all that. That may be the way God chooses to heal you because then he'll not just heal you, but he'll heal everyone around you as they watch your progress. Or it may be in a day. But can I tell you, I guarantee that there are people listening and watching this. You're one good decision away from everything starting to change in your life. And it is choosing to follow God with all of your heart. What do you need to do today to take a step toward following God with all of your heart? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above everything we could ask or think. We celebrate you today. We ask you to give us the courage to follow you with all of our heart today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Well, once again, Elijah said it, and it's time for us to do it. He said in verse 21, how much longer will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. Let's follow him with all of our hearts and watch what he does in our lives. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow for 1 Kings chapter 19. 